Alright, zooming in the book. Very nice. Okay, so we're beginning this course in financial economics with textbook Financial Markets and Institutions by Saunders and Cornett. Okay, I'll have one first introductory chapter and then we continue with financial markets and financial institutions. Today I'll be doing chapter one and basically give an introduction to financial economics. You have already studied financial economics from your money in banking course. So we begin first the subject of economics. Economics is the subject of scarce resources, okay? It's not about money, it's not about goods, it's about anything which is scarce. Scarce! Means there is available less than what people want. This course of financial marketing institutions is a course about financial economics. Financial economics is the subject of the financial system. In other words, in financial economics, we study the financial system. Let's do like the kids, the red cover. So, financial economics is about the financial System. Now, what is the financial system? Financial system has three elements. Financial system is the subject, or we study financial system number one, financial instruments. Number two, financial markets. Occasionally zoom in here, right, from time to time. And then when it's seen, you then you just zoom back out. And and you can also keep partially zoomed, right? Number three, financial institutions. Okay. So, the financial system, we say, comprises or consists of financial instruments, financial markets, and financial institutions. Financial instruments give you the answer of what? What are people doing, right? They do financial instruments. We say they buy and sell financial instruments. In finance, we call this trade. <clears throat> so, to trade means to buy and sell. Now, in financial economics, 
It means to buy and sell financial instruments. Next, financial markets tell you where. Where? On the financial markets. And finally, financial institutions tell you who. Okay. Back to one. So, now that I said what is economics, I said what is financial economics, we define financial economics as the subject of the financial system. We explain what is the financial system. Now we need to get to each element of the financial system. So, what is a financial instrument? Financial instrument has many different names. The next, another name is financial claim. Another name is financial asset. It's the same name, just different words, different names for the same thing. Financial asset. Okay, so what is a financial asset or financial claim or financial instrument? It is a claim on an entity's future, on an entity's assets and future earnings. It is a claim on an entity's future earnings and assets. Examples will be stock, bond, and so on. Again, we will be studying in the course of financial markets, we will be studying the instruments. Okay? So, let me see what else we got now here. Uh, what is a financial market? Financial market is a market where financial instruments are traded. So, financial instruments are traded on financial markets because you have many different markets. You got a fruit market, you got a clothes market, right? Every time you go shopping, you go to the market. You can go to the supermarket. This is the market for financial instruments. Okay. Now, number three, financial institution is also known as, and you have already studied, financial intermediary. So, financial institution is an institution which invests in financial instruments and issues financial instruments of its own. So, they issue financial instruments of its own and invests in financial or creates financial instruments. The function of financial intermediary, the main function is called intermediation. Intermediation channels funds.
We don't say money. It doesn't have to be money. It's funds. So, now what is a fund? And funds in general means a financial resource. A financial resource. It may be a bank deposit. Okay, it doesn't have to be only money. Okay, so funds means financial resource. Okay, so intermediation is the process of channeling funds from savers to uh, so, so from, okay, okay, so let's do this from uh, savers to <coughs> users. Saver. Who, or what is a saver? Saver is someone with surplus funds, meaning they have more funds than they need. Users are those with shortage of funds, those who have less funds than needs. So, the process of intermediation transfers funds from savers to users. Okay, next one is markets. A little bit about markets. Uh, we do this here now. Markets have very many different uh, classifications. The first important classification is that of primary markets and secondary. Primary market is a market where funds are raised. We say where funds are transferred from savers to users. Okay? Now, Savers who, in this case, the funds, those funds we call financial instruments, savers who buy financial instruments for income, we call these people, if you buy a stock, very good. If you buy a bond, we call these people investors. Okay, so in a primary market is where investors fund users, okay? In a secondary market, in other words, funds are raised. In a secondary market, funds are traded between investors, between investors. So, in the primary market, new funds are raised. In the secondary market, no new funds are raised. Only one investor sells it to another investor. Okay? In the primary market, the one who 
sells the financial instrument is called issuer. And the process of selling a financial instrument is called an issue, to issue. So, a corporation, when they want to sell bonds, we say that they issue bonds, and the corporation is called an issuer, or they can sell stock, so the corporation issues stocks, become an issuer, okay? In the secondary market, you have investor selling to investor. So, the buyer is always an investor. In the primary market, the seller is an issuer, and in the secondary market, the seller is an investor. That's the difference. Okay. Next one, markets are money markets and capital markets. Money market, capital markets. The correct definition of money market, there's only one proper correct definition is money market is a financial market where money market instruments are traded. So, money market is a financial market where money market instruments are traded. So, now we need to define money market instruments. Money market instrument is a, again, financial instrument of short-term maturity, or we say is a short-term financial instrument. is a short-term financial instrument. In finance, short-term has a very specific meaning. Short-term means? Less than one year. Less than one year, which is not quite correct. It's not less than one year, it's one year or less. In other words, if it's one year, it is short, short term. So we don't say less than one year, it's got to be less than or one year. Okay, one year or less. Capital markets are financial markets for, now we can say, capital market instruments, or we can say for long-term instruments. Long-term instrument is an instrument of maturity of more than one year. Maturity is a period of time for which a financial instrument must be paid in full. In other words, financial instrument dies. A different way to describe this, financial instrument lives. In other words, it gives you the life or the length of life of a financial instrument. So, a five-year bond will have a life of 
five years, okay? But six month deposit will have a life of six months. So maturity is kind of like synonymous with life. Now, maturity comes from the word mature. And mature means in finance, what? A bond matures. Huh? To what? A duration, a duration. No. To mature means to become payable. To become payable. So, a bond to mature means that the bond becomes payable by the issue. You gotta use these words. There are no other words. These are the only words that you use. You see that all these are, these are terms. They are very specific, okay? Uh, example, I was in your other class and well, with the fourth year students asking, what is a bank? And they say, oh, it is a place where whatever. Well, what is this place? Okay, what is this place? This place is called a financial institution, okay? And then they say, oh, you make a deposit. And I say, who are you? You, oh, you gotta say, you can say investors, you can say savers. But again, it's very tricky. It's better to say financial institution, which issues deposits, okay? You don't have to say who and how. So, it's the financial institutions it issues deposits and makes commercial loans. That's it. A commercial bank is a financial institution that issues deposits, or we can say makes deposits and provides commercial loans. Very precise. So, maturity means the length of time until the instrument becomes payable. Let's see what else we got here. All right, primary, secondary, okay. So, the main function of secondary markets is called liquidity. is to provide liquidity. Liquidity means the ability to sell an asset quickly and for full price. Remember, some people think, oh, you can sell quickly. No, that's not true. That's not true enough. Uh, is a watch a liquid asset or not a liquid asset? Not a liquid asset. No. So, a watch is an illiquid asset. Question now is, it's illiquid. I'll agree with that. Can I sell it quickly or cannot sell it quickly? We can sell it quickly. How? Go to the market and then... Well, I have to go to the market? Is it that bad? I mean, I can't sell it here in class. You can. Huh? You can. I can, right? Well, let's see. This is a nice Seiko, okay, right? And uh, it's Kinetics, very special technology. It's partially automatic. And guess what, right? Right? Let's advertise a little bit Seiko, right? <laughs> And it charges a battery. So it is charged by the movement of the hand. But if I put it on for two weeks, the battery is getting charged, so it will not stop, okay? And it gets better than that. This is a sapphire crystal, okay? And what else? 
The yellow thing is actually gold plating, okay? And what else? Well, it costs about $150, right? Now we do an auction. Anybody buy it for $100? No. <laughs> well, all right, but I'm pretty sure if I say, uh, you want it for a dollar? Yeah. Oh, yeah, <laughs> we immediately. So, I can pretty much sell it within a minute or so if I want to sell it for a dollar, okay? So, the asset can be sold quickly, but not at the real, true, genuine market price. If you got a house, I'm sure you can sell it very quickly. I can pull out $100 right away and buy your house, right? That shouldn't be a problem. And now here, people like say, oh, motorcycles aren't very liquid, right? Hard to sell. No, not so hard to sell. I'll pull out, let's say, $20, right? Okay, $20, and I'll buy it right away, right? You say, yeah, but $20 is no good, right? Okay, the point is not whether you can sell it quickly, but whether you can sell it quickly for a full price. Okay, so that's the key to liquidity. The second part is more important to get a price close to the market price quickly. So you can get a full price on your house, but it may take three months. You can still take a full price on your motorcycle, but it may take two, three, four weeks, okay? And I can get a good price on my watch too. Maybe if it's brand new, $150, maybe now it's used gonna cost $30 or $40 will be its market value. But it may take three, four weeks, okay, to sell. So, Liquidity is measured by the time that it takes to get a price close to the market price. Okay, let's see what else. Uh, a second function which the secondary market provides is information as in pricing information. So, not simply pricing, pricing information. So, it gives you the price, you know what the price is. And it gives you information. The information is, is the price going up or is the price going down? Is it getting more valuable or less valuable? So, the secondary market provides pricing, liquidity, and information in general. Let's see what else I have. Uh, if an instrument is not liquid, we say that the instrument is illiquid. Illiquid means not. We this divide capital markets generally in two categories. We can separate them here, we can separate them here into debt market, equity, debt market, and equity, equity market. A debt is a financial instrument, we like to say is a financial obligation for specific payments at specific time. So, you're going to make six interest rate payments, maybe monthly, maybe three monthly, maybe six years, six months, okay? And usually debt has a specific, uh, I'm looking, maturity, 
So it provides for specific payments on specific dates and has a specific maturity. In other words, specific date on which it must be paid in full. And equity is a residual claim on assets. Residual claim on assets. Which means I gotta define residual. <laughs> residual claim is a claim on assets after all other obligations have been fully and completely satisfied for a company. After taxes have been paid, after workers' salaries have been paid, after suppliers have been paid, after electric company has been paid, after all other creditors have been paid. Okay. Next. Suppliers of debt, those people that provide debt are called creditors. Creditors are providers of debt. A different way of saying is that creditors are buyers of debt financial instruments. They buy debt financial instruments. These are called creditors. And now comes the most difficult and confusing words it is about the providers of equity. We call these investors. And now comes the confusing part. So what is really an investor? The correct, proper, technical definition of investor is a buyer of equity. Okay, that's the correct definition. Okay, but some people like to think if you buy a house, you're still an investor. Okay, if you buy a, a bond, you're still an investor. Okay, so investing has two meanings. The purchase of equity, financial instrument, and the second is the purchase of any financial instrument. So we have a narrow meaning and a broad meaning. Okay. Now, there is a third, even broader meaning of investor. Investor is someone who purchases an asset. Could be a financial asset, could be a real asset. Okay. Real asset, we say for return. Okay. Next comes the concept in financial economics of, let me draw a line over here, again, the concept of profit. In finance and in financial economics, there is no profit. Profit doesn't exist. Profit is not the subject. When you buy a stock, you don't have a profit. When you buy a bond, there is no profit. When you buy a house and the price goes up, it's not a profit. profit. So, what is the profit?
So, profit is income, which results from economic activity. In other words, profit comes from the source of profit is business. You buy and sell motorcycles, you buy and sell laptops, you provide haircuts, or for guys like me, shaving, okay? Uh, you do tailoring, okay? You provide some sort of economic activity. So, the source of profit is economic is in business. In finance, there are no profits. In finance, there's only return. And return is simply the income from... From what? Trading financial instruments. Oh, that's game. Oh, 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 oh. Trading means buying and selling. What if you don't trade? What if you buy it but you never sell it? So, it's not necessarily trading from simply financial instruments. You may buy it and you may hold it. You may buy it and you may sell it. It's simply any income from financial instruments. Okay? Nobody says trading, okay? It doesn't have to be from trading. So that's the return. So you got a bond, you got a return on the bond. You got a stock, you got a return on the stock, okay? Now comes the trickier part. Okay, let's do the next part before that. Uh, the following. Next part is called an asset and an asset class, okay? So, what is an asset? I mean, you've studied it in accounting, you had accounting, and you've studied it in economics, and you've studied it in financial economics, meaning money and banking. Let's try. Guesses, good guesses, intelligent guesses. What's an asset? Asset? Accounting? Um, the properties that we own. Okay, property that we own. What else? Um, that can be traded. Yeah, what else? If, what if you don't trade it? You keep it. Okay, number one. Asset is a, instead of property, is a resource. Barren, just in general. Something of value. Something's got to be valuable. If it's not valuable, it's not asset. So, the first key characteristic is value. The second key characteristic of an asset is you own it. The third key characteristic, just because you own it, doesn't mean it's yet yes. your asset. There's got to be something other part. You got to control it. You got to be able, hey, you can have a motorcycle, right? But if somebody stole your motorcycle, <laughs> yeah, it's still yours, but it's not your asset anymore. So you got to have a control. You know, you can do it me for a day and I'll pay you rent, whatever. Somehow you gotta have a control of the asset. So you gotta be able to control it. And if you control it, part of having an asset is actually using it. Now, you may give it to somebody else for use, but it's control and use. And there is one last piece. Somehow, an asset should be generating revenue, as in income. An example, 
of not satisfying this definition is the air we breathe, okay? It has value, but you can't exactly own it. Well, and you can't really control the air over here, okay? But you can use it somehow to generate income. Another example which is not an asset is the sun, okay? The sun is, well, it sure has got value, but you can't possibly control it. Yes, you can generate income. Well, what about the light up here? It's time to take a break. <laughs> yes, we will. Don't worry. Uh, the light, is it an asset or not an asset? <coughs> Does it have a value? I mean, this light here, you know, not this one. Yes. Yeah. Do we own it? Well, the, no, I mean the university in general, not you and me. <laughs> the university in general, does it own it? Yes. Sure. Does the university in general control it? Yes. Yeah, it's got a switch. Does it generate income? Indirectly. In other words, it provides a service that generates the income. So the light is an asset. Okay. So we got the definition of an asset which is the most fundamental in economics, accounting, business, finance. Now we come to the financial concept of an asset class. An asset class is a group of assets with similar characteristics and meaning similar properties, characteristics, and similar returns. So they are kind of like you know, a class of, could be, let's say, different books will be class, okay? Different motorcycles will be class. A bigger class will be vehicles, like cars and trucks and motorcycles, okay? So, that's an asset class, okay? And in finance, there are five main, the five main, the five primary, asset classes. We also call them, they got a special name, we call them investment class. Okay? So, in this particular case, asset class in finance becomes investment class. And there are five investment classes. Exactly five. Only five. Okay? There's a sixth class which I'll define a little later, but all primary are five of them. It's time to take a five or ten minute break. <laughs>